Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back with our parallel playthrough of the Tour de France 2021 in Pro Cycling Manager 2021. And today's stage is the first time trial. And that is something I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, be watching in real life. But in here we don't really have anyone who can be a favorite apart from Kasper. If he has a really good day. But Kerob, isn't that a little nasty towards Cataneo? Yeah, I guess. If he has a really, really good day, then he has a, a chance as well. Maybe not to win, but the podium might be might be in it. That's uh, quite far-fetched, though. Yeah, so what are we going to do today? Well, I think if Kasper is doing really well, then uh, he is uh, going to attempt to uh, get a really good placement. And for Julien Alaphilippe, of course, it is minimize your time losses. And there we have it. This is the uh, favorites listing. And we are actually in there with uh, Kasper Asgren. So, uh, yep, that is looking good. Uh, Van Aert is supposed to be the favorite. And Stefan Kung, yes. He is a beast on the time trial, of course. Uh, yeah, um... That's that's looking as expected, really. That, but if you, <laughs> it's interesting though. Usually this is this is like full of tour favorites right at the start. But here the tour favorites are starting uh, at placement five. If you don't count Van Aert, who might of course pull one out there and become god, as we have discussed in the <laughs> in the preview of this whole tour. But uh, I, I doubt it. So, um, rock glitch down here. And with that, I think we are just going to get into it. Let's hope for some good race day conditions, and here we go. Yeah, these two little climbs are not to be underestimated. They are certainly not good for getting into a rhythm, that's for sure. And then we have the final one there, which can c catch some people out who have been uh, going on a pacing strategy that was uh, a little front heavy. Okay, first rider on the ramp. He's going to feel things out. This time trial is quite abysmal. And as such, I'm not going to attempt to ride very hard with him uh, or optimize too much. But let's let's see where we are at. I think a pretty good starting point would be 70 and then maybe 75, 78-ish on the steeper sections and see if that holds up. And here going into the second little climb, this is all very small scale, so uh, it takes a little quick changes here and there. There we go, into the downhill again. And from the looks of it already, it seems like 75 is more of an optimal point for us to be at for the majority of the stage. The flat easy part here, no problems whatsoever. I've upped it to 80. <laughs> that uh, is roughly where we have equilibrium in uh, the use of energy. So I finally figured that one out. It's always good to have a rider to go out front. This is this is the stuff that you do in preparation with your team, pacing strategy. Just scout the course, be out there, set up a good racing strategy, a pacing strategy, and uh, take a look at all the nasty corners. But that's something you can't do in Pro Cycling Manager, of course. Not ahead of time. So yeah, but this is a throwaway uh, ride anyway. I'm not too worried about that. So it is, once we see the green um, ad adverts and on the side, that means we are moving into the steeper section there, right around the corner. And there, I guess we want to go then something like 80, 85? And 99 to the finish. Just burn yourself out. Yes. Okay, we've learned a few things here. Uh, yeah, maybe actually I would want to use the uh, hill skill of the rider, so I want to go at like 95, if that is something that actually works in time trials as well. And Mark Cavendish is up next, I, I don't think we are going to do any time trial attempts with him here, uh, just have him go at, uh, take, take it easy mate, take it easy. We need you on the next stage, I believe. And the same thing with the clerk. And then we have our candidate for the win. 
So that is where we really have to start optimizing hard. And we're off. Ah, yes, just a plus one today. Uh, well, it's good. It's good, but is it good enough? I highly doubt it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, well, let's see. Let's go 75 here. Uh, or mm, a little higher. 77 and then go and go hard up the climbs getting closer to the first one. Let's accelerate Maybe go 90 up here Yeah, 10% slope Just keep some momentum going and then drop back down to the uh, 80 baseline Next slope over the top keep some momentum going. Yes. Well done and back down Slightly higher effort in the little climb here, and we are uh, keeping pace with the distance roughly at this point. I do need to catch up a little and have some reserves for the final push. Ah, uh, okay. And we are currently in third. What? Did we do so poorly? Can't really imagine that. How have we have we lost 26 seconds so far? And, well, we are still in third, after the uh, flat bit there. Uh, 26 seconds. No more time gain or loss. And we have... Yeah, we have made up some of that energy that we need for the for the final dash. Okay, here we go. So there, there it is. We see that, and I think now we just go 95 and see this how long it lasts. Still one kilometer left to go. I think we should have moved harder overall. Come on, accelerate. Accelerate. Go as hard as you can with the remainder of your resistance. And, yeah, pretty good. Well, not really. But Kampenart, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, at least that's proper competition. Ballerini on the ramp. Let's uh, just put him on chill mode. All right, Cataneo, not looking too hot either. Plus two there, yeah, it's decent, but um, I, I'm i not even sure if we should try. Maybe. I mean, he has decent stats. It's another learning opportunity for Alaphilippe, that's for sure, because he's better in the hill here. So, yeah, let's um, ride him properly, even though he just has a zero. 95 up the hill. Come on. Push it. Push it hard. And there we go. And drop back down. Optimizing across those little climbs as well and slowly regaining our red again. I don't know if we are going to recover it all until the finish That is a pretty fast time fourth here 22 seconds down But indeed it looks like Yeah, seventh 29 seconds I only lost another seven uh, seven seconds there and almost recovered all the red Already, so we are going to have a full bottle of red there available for a good final push. And there we have it, so uh, accelerate for the corner, and there we go. The Up the climb, 10% steep. Go 99, give it your all, give it your all. Accelerate out, 56 kilometers an hour, and we are pretty much empty. Uh, dropping, perfect, okay. Uh, well... Where did we finish 7th? 20 seconds down. Oh, and there's Stefan Kung <laughs> nuking them all. But we weren't that far away. So, well, half a minute. <laughs> but let's talk pacing strategy before Alaphilippe is on the ramp. I think we are doing pretty well with the, the one that we found with uh, Cataneo. And that would be go pretty hard over those first hills and then after the second incline, after the third incline, uh, settle down into a nice pace, recover all your uh, all your red bar until the final climb, and then power up that last bit. Oh, are you kidding me? Van Aert beating Stefan Kung with 28 seconds. Holy. That is a lot of time he's putting into everyone. And Alaphilippe is on the ramp. He does have a decent-ish race day condition, but nothing good. Uh, so, yeah, this is not going to be a, a pleasant uh, experience. I don't think we have the yellow jersey after this one. So, uh, let's um, progress with our... or proceed with our plan. 
And there we go. We are getting into hilly, into the hilly state there. And power over this one. Accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. Good, good, good. And across. And then for this next one, the only thing we need to do is keep that pace up from the downhill. There we go, 95 again. It's just such a short little incline. There we go, perfect. Okay, kept that speed up. That's the important part. Now, settle down into our pace. And here, over the river, we are amping it up slightly again, up to 80. We are just about correct with our pacing strategy so far, but the easy part of the course is still coming up. And the first split time is coming up. Where are we at? How far down? Only 29 seconds. And 16. <laughs> yeah, ouch. That's about where I was expecting to be. Cataneo in 17th on that one. Oh no, that was the total. Um, where are we at? There's so many riders in front of us there. Uh, also Roglic and Pogacar. Yeah, in the 6th and 7th. Alright, here we go. Can we get across this one in style? Let's see. Oh, let's go 95. Accelerate. Power over the climb. Re-accelerate for the finish. And then just keep it there. Yeah, this is looking good. Looking good from a energy management point of view. Perfect. Okay, couldn't have done it any better than this. And we lost 1 minute and 13 seconds. Ouch! Volt van Aert takes it with 29 seconds on Stefan Kung. Oh, just another few seconds behind, seven seconds to be exact, is Garen Thomas, then Brent McNulty, and uh, for the overall, no, we are still leading. Whew, we still have yellow. Uh, second, uh, second place right now, just eight seconds down, Roglic. Then Garen Thomas at 33. He must have lost some serious time there, as has Pogacar. 37 seconds down. Whew! Hey! What a result! Not great? Definitely not great. Well, Kaspar Asgren didn't have a chance! 10th of all. Still our best rider. You really need to have a very, very good day on top of uh, fantastic stats to have any kind of chance here. Uh, so 21st of all in the time trial, that's a little disappointing. So here you have the overview of the general standings after the first time trial. Alaphilippe still leading with 8 seconds advantage. But uh, yes, the favourites are slowly crystallising out and moving to the top. Of course Van der Poel is still in here as well. And he won't be for much longer. Well, stage 8 and 9 is where he's going to definitely be not at the front anymore. But um, let's take a quick look at the next stage. Oh, that's the short one with potential wind hazard. That is going to be quite interesting. Another sprint stage, but one that could have some uh, nasty little things happen during the normal chase down of the SKPs. So I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. Hey you there. I heard you like cycling games. I think I got something for you here. The Cyclist Tactics is a turn-based strategy game in which you lead a small team of professional cyclists from humble beginnings to competing for the top of the podium in the toughest and most prestigious cycling events in the world. In the highly tactical, procedurally generated races, success comes about when superior decision-making meets careful resource management and planning. Teamwork is essential to keep your leaders protected, avoid peloton pulling duties, create lactate threshold crushing lead outs and to set up your lead rider in perfect position for the final dash. Guide your team's riders as they gain skills and progress from struggling eager novices to monument winning superstars with a hefty price tag and more flaws than they started with. If you fancy Nuance Tactics, where decision making is king, follow the game's development and try out the demo.